Consider this example. 84 is divisible by 4 and 7. We can clearly make out this is a compound statement formed by two simple statements. 84 is divisible by 4. 84 is divisible by 7. Right. Both these sub-statements or component statements P and Q are combining together, joining together, connecting together with the help of the word and and giving rise to this original compound statement. Another word for and is conjunction. And the symbol which is used to denote it is partial A. We say that the given compound statement is a conjunction of P and Q. And how do you write it? You write it as P and Q. All right. Similarly, consider this example now. The sun shines or it rains. This is again a compound statement formed with two simple statements. The sun shines, it rains. Both these component statements or sub-statements R and S are combining together with the help of the word or and giving rise to this original compound statement. Right? Another name for OR is disjunction and the symbol which is used to denote it is V. Okay? So A is conjunction, you invert it, you get disjunction. We say that the given compound statement is a disjunction of R and S and how do you write it? R or S. Alright, please keep in mind that both AND as well as OR are called basic logic connectives or simply connectives. See, the very first agenda is to understand how the truth value of a conjunction statement, which is a compound statement with AND connective, is dependent upon the truth and falsity of its component statements. And the next agenda will be to understand how the truth value of a disjunction statement, which is a compound statement with OR connective, is dependent upon the truth and falsity of its respective component statements or substatements. Alright, beginning with conjunction. So in here I have the exact same example with me. 84 is divisible by 4 and 7. We have just learned that this compound statement is nothing but conjunction of P and Q where P and Q individually are its two respective substatements. Alright, so in here I have a table with three columns. The first two are occupied by P and Q and the last one is occupied by their conjunction P and Q. We want to find out that how is the truth and falsity of these two component statements is impacting the truth and falsity of their conjunction statement. Okay, now you tell me one thing. In what all combinations can P and Q be true and false? Very basic common sense oriented question I'm asking. So the first case can be that both P and Q are individually valid statements or true statements. The second case can be that P is true and Q is false. The third case can be that P is false and Q is true. And the fourth and the last case can be that P and Q both are invalid statements or both are false. That's it. The possibilities are exhausted. These are the only four scenarios in which P and Q can be true and false. Isn't it? Understood? Our agenda will be to understand how in each of these four scenarios I am getting the truth and falsity of my conjunction statement P and Q. Alright, so let's get started. See, right now, let's analyze the truth value of the given compound statement 84 is divisible by 4 and 7. It is saying that 84 is divisible by 4 and 7. That means it's divisible by both 4 and 7. This is indeed true, isn't it? 84 is divisible by 4, yes, and it is also divisible by 7, yes. So right now, the truth value of my given conjunction statement is true. 
Now let's analyze the truth value of the individual component statements. So 84 is divisible by 4, this is true. 84 is divisible by 7, this is also true. So from this discussion, I can infer that when P and Q both are true, in that case, P and Q is also true. Okay, fine then, let's move ahead and talk about the next case. Let's say I have in place of 7, 5. Okay, in that case, 84 is divisible by 4 and 5. This is obviously false. Do you agree? Because the statement is trying to say that both 4 and 5 divide 84 completely. That's not true, right? Both of them do not divide 84 completely. So my given conjunction statement has what truth value? False. What about P and Q individually? 84 is divisible by 4, true. 84 is divisible by 5, no, no, that's not true. That's completely untrue. It's false. So from here, what can I infer? That when P is true and Q is false, in that case, P and Q comes out to be false. Okay, and let's say in place of 4, I had 5. Okay, in place of 4, I had 5. In that case, again, my given compound statement would have been the same. 84 is divisible by 5 and 7. Well, it is divisible by 7, but it's not divisible by 5. So, completely, my complete compound statement would have had what truth value? False. An individual P and Q, well, 84 is divisible by 5. False. 84 divisible by 7. True. What is the inference that you can draw from here? P is false. Q is true. In that case, P and Q is coming out to be false. And let's say, if I would have had let's say 6 over here or 8 over here okay you know that 84 is not divisible by 5 and 84 is not divisible by 8 am i right okay that means 84 is divisible by both 5 and 8 that is entirely false drastically false and what about p and q individually 84 is divis divisible by 5 false 84 is divisible by 8, false. Conclusion, P false, Q false implies P and Q is also false. So did you see? Did you see? We did conclude about the truth value of the conjunction statement in each of these four cases. Okay? So when you look at the last column, which completely gives you the truth value of the conjunction statement, what can you infer from here? You can clearly see that P and Q is true only and only when P and Q both individually are true. When P is true, Q is false or P is false, Q is true or both P and Q are false. That means when at least one out of P and Q is false, then the outcome is that their conjunction statement is also false. Okay, so from here a drastically important conclusion which you should obtain is that conjunction statement of any number of statements, okay, all in all I am saying conjunction statement happens to be two, true if and only if each of its component statements individually is true. If at least one of its component statements happens to be false, then the resulting conjunction statement also is false. All right. Now, next up, we have disjunction, that is OR. But before I dive into its detailed discussion, let me tell you that there are two types of disjunctions or two types of OR. First of all, you have your inclusive OR and then you have your exclusive OR. The symbol for inclusive OR is this partial inverted A and the symbol for exclusive OR is the partial inverted A along with a little dash underneath. In order to understand their meaning, let me portray to you an example. The school is closed if it is a holiday or a Sunday. We can clearly make out that this is a compound statement formed with two simple statements, P and Q, wherein P is the school is closed on a holiday and the statement Q is the school is closed on a Sunday. Both these simple statements are combining together with the help of the connective OR to give rise to this compound statement which is a disjunction of P and Q written as P or Q. 
क्यू राइट नाउ अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज हैपनिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस गिवन स्टेटमेंट इफ इट इज अ हॉलीडे द स्कूल इज गेटिंग क्लोज इफ इट इज अ संडे द स्कूल इज अगेन क्लोज If the holiday falls on a Sunday even on that day the school will remain closed that means p or q this disjunction statement is holding valid when p is holding true or q is holding true or both p and q are holding true that means at least one of the alternatives should occur so that my final statement holds valid on the other hand let's check out this example an ice cream or a coke is free along with a pizza let's say in pizza hut this is happening then this statement again is a compound statement formed with two simple statement an ice cream is free along with a pizza let's say that is p a coke is free along with a pizza let's call this q then both these simple statements p and q are combining again with the help of the word or to give rise to this compound statement which hence will be disjunction of p and q written as p or q but in here this is exclusive or why i'll just explain you see what's happening When you go to buy a pizza you can get an ice cream free along with it if you like ice cream if you do not like ice cream you have the option of taking coke to be free along with it but in no way you are getting both ice cream and coke free along with the pizza do you understand that means this complete written disjunction statement here is holding valid when p holds true or q holds true but in no way both are holding true so this gives you the inference that exactly one of the alternatives should occur for my final statement to hold valid are you understanding okay so this is the difference between inclusive or and exclusive or inclusive or is about p or q or both and exclusive or says p or q but not both we will first dive into the understanding of inclusive or and then move ahead to exclusive or let's start with inclusive or well in here p or q means p or q or both that means when at least one of the alternatives out of p and q will hold true then p or q that is junction of p and q will hold true will hold valid okay so p true q true both are true that is allowed in the inclusive or right it's it's like you know it's a sunday and a holiday so in that case p or q will definitely be true the school will remain closed if it is a sunday but it's not a holiday even then the school will remain closed so p or q will hold true if it is not a sunday but it is a holiday school will remain closed true if it is neither a sunday nor a holiday that means p is false q is also false in that case the school will not remain closed it will open that means p or q will be false okay so what are you able to infer from here that the truth value of p or q that is disjunction of p and q is false only and only when both of its or each of its sub statements are false otherwise in any other scenario it is true okay let's consider this example the sun shines or it rains you already know this is the disjunction of p or q in here or is again inclusive or why because there's something called sun shower have you heard about it in that scenario it's raining also and the sun is also out this scenario leads to a rainbow isn't it so it can happen that sun is shining and it's not raining it can happen that it's raining and sun is not shining it can happen that the sun is also shining and it's also raining 
Okay, so this is inclusive or. Okay, fine. So, realize that the discussion about inclusive or thus closes here and now it's time to move ahead to exclusive or. As I already said, P or Q is false only when both P and Q individually are false. Okay, what about exclusive or? Well, let's see. Let's quickly understand. In here, this means P or Q, but not both. Okay, so the first statement says P is true and Q is true. You are getting a Coke as well as an ice cream when you are buying a pizza. That can never happen in exclusive or, right? That means the final outcome is false. Okay, when both are true, outcome is false because both are not allowed to be true simultaneously. Next, if you are getting, let's say, you're getting an ice cream and not a Coke, that is true. Yes, not getting an ice cream, getting a Coke. That is also true. Neither an ice cream nor a Coke. That is not true. Because when you are buying a pizza, you have to get an ice cream or a Coke free. It can't happen that you can't get any free. So, not an ice cream, not a Coke means this is invalid. So, I hope the truth table for inclusive as well as exclusive or is clear to you. Here is an example. Student can take French or Sanskrit as their third and third language. In here, this is definitely a disjunction statement wherein the two simple statements or the two sub-statements that a student can take French, student can, can take Sanskrit as their third, third language. Both these sub-statements are combining together with this or. But in here, this or is actually exclusive or. Can you understand why? Can you understand why? Because as a third language, you can take French or Sanskrit. You cannot take both, obviously. Okay, so this is how the exclusive or statements look like. Okay, 